Hey guys, welcome back to another vlog. So today I'm invited to have a unfiltered um, radio talk show. I think I've procrastinated about this invite since last year and uh, finally today's the day. So I'm here at the Hills FM radio. So Hills FM radio is a community radio and uh, it's based in Dimapur. So I'll be talking about my life, journey, and the brands, the works that I do. So hope you guys watch till the end of this vlog. I'll be with RJ Timsitula. So that's the radio station. It's a community radio station, so yeah. It's nice. I'm loving it. Hello, my dear listeners. Welcome to 90.8 Hills FM, the voice of change, Nagaland's first community radio station. So today's interview, so exciting. I'm more excited <laughs> than all the listeners out there. So the guest today, is he a fashion model? Yes. Is he a title holder? Yes. Is he stylish? Yes. Does he have the best skin ever? Yes. So he ventured in the fashion industry. At a time when male models from Nagaland were extremely rare. I mean, not just male models, but even female models. Back when modeling as a career wasn't really as accepted as it is today. But ignoring all the naysayers and all the trolling, he died right into this industry. With years of experience and currently the ambassador of Liamka Business and Black Wish Tumapu, in the studio today we have none other than the extremely talented and so wonderful Mr. Opang Jonya. Welcome to the studio. Thank you, thank you. Oh, that's an impressive introduction, Ado. Thank you. I'm so, I mean, I personally am so excited to interview and I think it is my honor to be the one interviewing you. So thank you once again. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. So first and foremost, how are you feeling? How does it feel to be in our humble studio? <laughs> it's, we also begin with small things, right? And um, it's just incredible to see that you are doing something for our community, to reach out to the community. And I think this is a wonderful time that we all should help one another. That's how we grow, right? You cannot grow alone. You have to grow together as a com community. So, when you uh, messaged me and when you invited me, I was so thrilled to be here. And uh, of course, the timing was not right. Maybe last year, but yeah, better than never. Like we are here today. Mm, so yes, this is definitely the right time. What a lovely start to twenty twenty four, right? Absolutely, that is what I'm looking forward because twenty twenty four should be our year. Amen, amen. Yes. So, technically, purely speaking, you are um, professionally you are a fashion model. Right, right, right. So let's first talk about fashion. Okay, sure. So fashion model, and then you are title holder as well. You won Mister International India. Two thousand twelve. That was <laughs> 10, 12 years. But that was like I think back then there were not many male models who won right, the title. Right, 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 right. So um. In fact, forget about pageant titles, there weren't any shows also in Nagaland, not back then. There were, there were shows, but not like today, mm -hmm. not like today, because uh, again, social media helps a lot, right, today. So back then, we have to browse internet even just to chat with our friends, we have to go to a cyber cafe, mm -hmm. and uh, we have one rightly in Maripati, and here in Dimapur, and Holy Cross Junction, that was where the cafes were mushrooming back then. So, like, just to browse and uh, get updated about your friends or get connected across the world, it was just not possible like today. So, yeah. It's so bizarre talking about internet cafes these days. Absolutely. I think the children will be thinking, like, what is the internet cafe? But hold on, like, that is where we communicate. You know, <laughs> that was the channel there where we get communicated because our phones. We are not smartphones, mm -hmm. we had the keypad phones, mm -hmm. and life was different, but we enjoyed, yeah. Yes, so true. 
So how did you get into this fashion industry? How did it start? Well, uh, it started from a very, I would say like um, accident, by accident, I feel, because 2008 was, uh, 2007 was my elder sister's pageant, like, you know, mm. first pageant she contested for Miss Mokokchung, 2007. And I saw the male model, the female model, walking the rim on the Miss Mokokchung night. And my elder sister won the first honor up of Miss Mokokchung. Mm. And thanks to my sister for entering the pageant, because I forced her to do that, oh. just to buy television <laughs> for my younger brothers and sisters, because oh. I don't want to go to the, the neighbor's house to um, fetch my brothers and sisters if after our evening meal, like after our dinner, my brothers and sisters will be going to the neighbor's house to watch TV back then, 2007. And I, th I told my sister, I think we should do something. And my si sister and I, we came across the Miss Mokokchung forms and the audition states, and there it was clearly mentioned the winners will be getting 20,000, 15,000, 10,000. So my sister said, Ch Chalo, what's there to lose, right? Just to have an experience. And uh, we, you know, we acquired knowledge through the magazine like Femina and uh, Northeast um, Sun magazine just to get ideas of pageant because there were not much there on the in website as well. Mm -hmm. And it was very rare to get information on grooming or anything as such. So that's how my elder sister entered the pageant and that, that's how I got inspired from the male model and female model walking the ramp. And I, the next year I gave audition, 2008. I was in class 11 and uh, I just wanted to earn pocket money and to be independent because um, I, I come from a very humble family and I thought being independent will ease my parents' burden as well. And just for the heck of experience, I did some portfolio shoot because that's where you begin as a model. You have to have a good portfolio. And I did a portfolio with my um, Eastern Mirror journalist, Miss, uh, I, oh gosh, Miss Naro. <laughs> she was working at the Incident Gym Memorial School. She was a part-time journalist for Eastern Mirror. She clicked some random pictures and that's how I started my modeling, like, you know, 2008, sending to the agencies. There was not agency, also like the organizers, and they selected me, and I walked around 2008, I was 16. First payment was 1,000 rupees, and that was a lot because they did my travel and lodging for the show. So that's how I started my journey. 16 years. I was wow. 16, yeah. and. Well, it was a good escape for me actually. Mm. Modeling, I was a very shy person. Mm. I, um, you know, I lost my dad when I was in class A. And I was someone who never opens up and um, always with my, uh, you know, mother. And I was always a shy person. But uh, modeling, when I joined modeling, I think. I got the rebirth of my life, I would say. And modeling was actually the escape for me because up on the ramp, there's this one uh, point that you have to see that is the straight point, the, mm -hmm. the lights. And you just have to walk with, without even taking, even um, caring of what people will be looking at you in what condition. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, you know, took the plunge. I practice a lot on the mirror, and uh, yeah. How was it? <laughs> Did you like experience any criticisms or negative feedbacks when you first started? When I start, when I started, I feel everybody kept saying that modeling was for women. It is mm. not meant for men because this is not a profession that men will go for, and. Uh, I said I want I I would want to do it because this is where I'm getting my confidence. This is where I'm building my you know inner self. Um, you know the realization that 
I want to be, you know, um, the person that I want. And uh, well, being on the news, being on the cover of a magazine or anywhere like with your pictures, I think life is just once and there is nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. To see yourself and to be also like, you know, you, you wake up and oh, that's my work. That is my job, you know. So I just took the plunge. My neighbors were saying that ah, you you should not choose modeling as your career. But I said it's okay. I will. I know it will be hard. Nothing in this world is the the jobs is easy, and I want to just give a try. And back then there were like very few or like very less people who were modeling. Yeah. So I still remember Esther Jamir. Uh, oh yeah, Esther Jamir and Ethel Konyak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these two women were the female models. Mm -hmm. And uh, Akuno Kiji, the Miss in the first, I mean, I think she will be the yeah first mm -hmm. from Nagaland to participate for Feminine Miss India as well. How about male models? Were there any male models when you first started? There were none. Uh, there were none. Yeah, I, I think I'm the first. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. I mean, I cannot imagine you being the first male model here. I mean, doing something, not just modeling, but any profession, doing it for the first time in our city. Right. I received a lot of yeah. good things as well as bad things, but I think over the years, I've, I've had a you know, thicker skin, mm. and um, I am a person who doesn't um, likes to be around people a lot. Mm. After a certain event or program, I better rush home. Oh. Yes, I don't actually like to be ar around. I'm a very shy person. Mm -hmm. Still, I mean, I have that feeling that I should just go home rest mm -hmm. for my body mm -hmm. and for my inner self as well. So five minutes or ten minutes is good enough <laughs> for any events or functions that I, you know, attend. Yeah. <laughs> I like you more after that. <laughs> So your first show, do you remember your first show, like the experience, what you went through? Um, I wore a traditional attire, mm -hmm. and uh, the next one was uh, ethnic wear, then a designer wear. It was on November 8, 2008, at TDC Stadium. Mm -hmm. It was for the first Get Gorgeous Angel Model Hunt, oh, 2008. Okay. So we were the first male models mm -hmm. to sashay the ramp. To walk with them angels oh, yeah I, angels yeah <laughs> how was it how was the experience it was chill because it november but it was an open air so we had goosebumps <laughs> <laughs> in our body because like you have to literally wear the langdam <laughs> our langdam and traditional attire right so it was like quite chill mm -hmm. and open air mm -hmm. and we started way late as well the program was supposed to start at six, but it started by eight o'clock, so it was so okay. chill, yeah. yeah. Tired, but mm. it was a first experience, so no complaints. Mm -hmm. Today no. I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no way. Yeah, yeah. I'll refuse to do so. <laughs> yeah, pay me well. <laughs> so, um, when you started modeling here, and then you moved out from Nagaland and did shows outside right. of Nagaland as right, well. Right. So, how was it like when you first ventured out, coming from a state where fashion industry was not that developed back then, going to some other states, some other districts where fashion is quite accepted? Like Mumbai, yeah, yeah Delhi. How was it? Well, um, out there, it's well segregated. Mm -hmm. Over here, you know, the person who, who does the fashion doesn't know the ABCs of fashion. But out there, people who have experience, years of experience, they never bothers to claim themselves and this or and that. If he is a choreographer, he'll stick to choreography. Wow. And, and if he is a you know, talented makeup artist, mm. they will stick to that mm. profession. Mm. So out there, it's all about the well-segregated domain mm. that they have built. Like not everyone can be, um, you know, that, what should I say? acing on that mm -hmm. particular aspect, the job that is given, assigned to. So out there, everything is properly distributed. Mm -hmm. So when you're at the green room, you have a pack 
stage manager to guide you through, to walk you through because you didn't have to worry about the cues, the lines and everything. You just have to follow the backstage manager mm -hmm. and they will guide you and when it's your turn you have to walk. And the choreographers are totally professionals. They will not even shout at you, they will mm -hmm. just give you the instruction where to stand, where to move, when to enter and the show directors are amazing. The music, I like the music, how they, you know, caters to music because up there, like, I mean, it's always, the similarities are there, however, the professionalism and the segregation of work distribution is amazing. What a difference. Yeah, it's, it is. Do you think our state is also, our state's fashion industry is also catching up? Well, with time, because out here, even me, if I'm a fashion model, sometimes I'm being asked to, to be a this or that you know so sometimes um, I also I also want somebody to help me out mm. so I'm grooming people the young ones mm. to be um, you know taking up the role of a certain job the positions yeah uh, well, since you mentioned grooming I believe you are part of cats collection as well. the right top model cats the top model also. yes yes I believe you're the creative creative director, director yes, director, yes. so um, last year, in 2023, mm -hmm. when you guys were organizing that particular event, yeah. I heard that there were quite a lot of contestants compared to the previous season. Absolutely. Right? Contestants from other states as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, yes. We had around 50. Mm. So it was great. Um, you know, when we auditioned for the first year, we had only 20. But the next year, we had around 50. So it was a double of the first year, right? Mm. So we had a hard time selecting the mm. process and uh, this year we are making it bigger better much wow. yeah I hope my um, brand heads mm. BC and Kenny is, are aware that it will be a big <laughs> one <laughs> for sure <laughs> as we have promised and yeah be because this cats collection top model is purely um, owned by the siblings mm the partners, the brand heads, they never uh, search for the sponsors mm -hmm. for the past two edition. But I'm saying that without sponsor, we cannot make it, make, we cannot feel it big. However, um, this year they are changing their mind. I think we should go for sponsors. So hey sponsors, uh, if you're listening, yeah. <laughs> you should come and uh, support our Cats Collection Bell model as well. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Please reach out. Reach out to any one of us. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. um, you know, sometimes when we watch fashion shows, we see models, they tend to fall down, unfortunately. Right. They have these like, mischiefs. Right. Have you also ever experienced any mischiefs like that on your end? Uh, I think once I freezed, uh, I mean, it was for a very good designer show. Mm. I freezed because I did not ate well oh. I was hungry and uh, I just freeze for a couple of seconds where I, I was I shouldn't be posing actually oh. but I just <laughs> freezed and I posed mm. and I made I made it as if I'm just posing mm. even if I was having cramps on my left foot mm. yeah. mm. now Runway mode, you have done runway mode, right. as well as agents, as well right. as title holder. Right, right. So can you tell us like what exactly is the difference? Is it the same? Or? It's totally different. For pageant, you are assigned to be the voice for the people, for the for the causes, for the advocacies. Mm -hmm. For for my times, I have to advocate on um, HIV AIDS awareness. Mm -hmm. And also, um, it was in 2012, right? So I have to talk about HIV needs and the awareness, the stigma that is within the community. It's and also the environment and so on. So it was like you know, pageant is totally a different angle because we are supposed to be the face of the particular organization. And for modeling, it is just like your daily job. You do, you just do the runway, and you get paid. Mm. 
but you have to make sure that you are also at the right uh, body mm-hmm. mindset physically mentally mm-hmm. because you don't get jobs every day like um, you know at a European country or even in the US it's very limited so you have to make sure that you are having the cut- cutting edge mm-hmm. where you will be selected during the audition the process so modeling is a different aspect it's just like a job you know mm-hmm. so I love my job do you feel like these days modeling has become more difficult to be selected as a model I think the cutting edge the competition has been you know upscaled mm-hmm. and um, there are more uh, inclusivity is, is also there mm. so uh, there is competition uh, if you are with the right body mm. the criteria and also you have the right connections mm. contacts I think you will definitely like you know swim up mm. so how about you personally since you have been uh, you have done runway you have done pageants mm-hmm. which one do you uh, find more interesting for you Modeling for sure because pageantry it it is just a year, so when um, it's just like one year doorway to your stardom, right? So in that one year you have to really work hard for yourself and for your community, and in after the one year reign it's over. Um, sometimes you are being forgotten. Many of my uh, successors are forgotten. I think it's all about relevancy as well staying relevant at the R. So I think I will any day choose modeling. Awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have some random rapid fire questions for you oh, now. Sure, sure. <laughs> so um, the rule is mm-hmm. to take too much time to answer. Okay, I'll, I'll be spawning this, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Are you ready? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> Texting or talking on the phone? Talking, for sure. You hate texting? I hate texting, <laughs> yeah. Tea or coffee? I'm a tea person. I, I actually love coffee, mm. but I always have... I ended up having loose motion oh. after consuming coffee, so... Tea. Totally tea person. Yeah, tea. Dogs or cats? Oh, I can't choose. But I have a cat. I'm Lucy. She's been there with me for the past four years. Auntie Lucy. I named her Auntie Lucy. <laughs> so yeah. At first I thought you were gonna say cats because I mean I keep on seeing your status. Yeah. Yes. Cat. Yes. Yes. I love my cat. She's totally my you know uh, savior during the pandemic. I never liked pets at oh, first. Oh okay. But <laughs> during the pandemic, I don't know how we adjusted. Mm. It's the innocent mm-hmm. of her, mm-hmm. and also the innocent, also the recklessness mm. and the curiosity that led me bonded with her, my cat. Yeah. <laughs> Auntie Lucy. <laughs> so sweet. Thank you. Best memory of twenty twenty three. Best memory of twenty twenty three. Oh, I have too many good memories, but uh, it would be. Um, my birthday, mm. because I was cooking okay. for my loved ones, and I shared food mm. with all my loved ones. Oh. So, okay. So when is your birthday? It's sixteen August. Sixteenth August. Okay, you have to keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> right after Independence yeah. Day. <laughs> so I believe you like cooking as well. I l- sometimes when I have time, mm. I love to cook. And of course, I I have to manage all these years. I've been traveling, yeah. hustling, and hajra <laughs> gamburidana. I call myself as a hajra wala because I'm there every uh, like you know, I'm there in Kohati for five days in like Tsumanyo in ten for ten days or fifteen days in in various parts of mm-hmm. the cities. And uh, I extremely feel like I'm a hajra wala daily <laughs> waitress. <laughs> <laughs> My profession demands that. Then how about your favorite meal? Favorite meal? Anything Naga food. Naga dish? Anything. Yeah, anything Naga dish. Yes. And I, one of my favorite would be uh, kangaroo. It's a 
Okay, Rengma, <laughs> Rengma specialty chutney made from the mustard, dried mustard leaves. Mm. I'm just hooked to that and guru now. I'm definitely going to try that because I have not tried it. You have never tried it, right? No. You should be invited by the Rengmas for any events and shows <laughs> so that you get to try that. I think maybe you should invite me on August 16th. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely do that. Or maybe I'll send you a packing as well to your studio. <laughs> yeah. How about your favorite color? Um, black. Black. Oh. Yeah, because I'm mysterious. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I know listeners cannot see this right now, but I'm giving a high five to him right now because black is also my favorite color. Oh. Who did you last uh, call? Since he's not like calling. Calling. Mm. Uh, this morning. Mm, yeah. Who did you last call? I think it was you. <laughs> <laughs> Just to let you know that I'm on time because. <laughs> An hour, mm-hmm. an hour advance. Yes. Because yes. I, I don't want to be late for anything. I'm super mm-hmm. punctual. Oh yes, there's something actually I know about you. You're very disciplined. Because if you don't follow the time, mm-hmm. I think you won't be successful in life as well. Mm-hmm. Because I like to be punctual and I don't like people waiting. Mm-hmm. Especially in my field and fashion modeling, I mean, we have to keep on mod- waiting for one another, mm-hmm. which I don't like. It's terrible. So. Mm-hmm. I want each of people out there listening mm-hmm. to be punctual. Yeah, Just move so. ahead an hour advance. Like we always we say, no? He is very zub zub. Yes, the zub zub. <laughs> zub. <laughs> right. Best fashion show experience till date. It would be it would be oh I have too many. Um one in Hyderabad mm-hmm. because uh it was for the sh- um, golf championship award, oh, wow. where um, Man- Mandira Betty was the host, and it was choreographed by Shai Bobo, and the backstage was managed by um, the team, the wonderful team of uh, from Delhi. I I, I can't f- remember the name, but it was a beautiful experience for me because I slept only two hours. I have to rush back to Delhi for another yeah. show. I think it was quite a big show, no? It was a big yeah. show. It was a golf championship where all the big names yeah. comes to witness the show and mm. also get awarded. So that was one memory. Exciting. Yeah. That sounds so exciting. Best advice which you have received till date? I think it was um, it was from my mom. Yeah. When even in good things you should not stop competing within your siblings as well but never compete for bad things that's what my mother says she always advises me like for good things for being the best you should just compete with your siblings as well mm-hmm. that means you have to compete with the person the outsiders as well so she completely ingrained me that so i always try to be the best first pers- version of myself every day so beautifully said uh, thank so you beautiful. What qualities do you look for in an ideal romantic partner? No. <laughs> Punctual, for sure. Spontaneous, caring, loving. Yeah. All right. First thing you do when you get up in the morning? Um, I always make my bed, fold my blankets. Yeah, and of course, I have to brush my teeth, wash my face. That's what I do. Because the smallest thing that you have to do, the first task in the morning is folding your you know, bed. Yes. So that is what I do. So I completely agree with you on that. And of course, check my phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing you do before you sleep at night? Um, skincare. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Can you tell us a little bit about your skincare? I think our listeners would love to know about it. Well, I don't use a lot of product mm-hmm. out there. I use a certain company that is my, uh, you know, go-to. Mm-hmm. So it's from the US mm-hmm. and it's really good. I don't want to mention the name right now, but it's a really good brand and I've been using it for the past a year now. Wow. And uh, it's really nice. Mm-hmm. So, so not I, too many products. Not too many products and it's expensive. I think you should just go for one product that mm-hmm. works for you and just declutter the rest. Mm. You don't need a lot. Mm. Your skin also 
is not a machine that observes everything. So you should just listen to your skin and moisturize well mm. and um, take, you know, pity sleep because I sleep 10 hours. Wow. So I usually sleep by 10 mm. in the, at night and I wake up pretty good, like 6, 7. That's a proper beauty sleep for you. Eh? Absolutely, <laughs> 10 hours. And sometimes I can sleep more. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> But don't ask me for a sleeping competition. <laughs> <laughs> Who sleeps the longest? <laughs> when are you most productive? Morning, night, afternoon? With any given pressure, mm. I think I'm the most productive person. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I think, uh, like, um, I would say towards late afternoon. Mm. Yeah, right now. Right now. Yeah. The best time for <laughs> Absolutely, I can be like the tether box, I can blubber anything. <laughs> if you weren't a fashion model, mm -hmm. what would you have been? Definitely, definitely in, in armed forces. Oh. Yeah, I really wish okay. to become, uh, mm. you know, uh, you know, to protect, not to protect, but just to wear the uniform. <laughs> I like uniform service, yeah. Mm. Okay, now I know why you're so zup zup. Oh. <laughs> a celebrity whose style you admire and why? I have a lot, yeah. But, um, talking about the celebrity, I uh, uh, David Beckham. Okay. Yeah, I always admire because, after all, his partner is none other than Vic Victoria, oh, the good. amazing designer. Yeah. So I always stalk him. Mm. His fashion, mm -hmm. his style, and everything, yeah. So cool. I, I mean, both of them are like total style icons. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Books or movies? Books. Books. Uh, any favorite books? Any books that you love reading? I, I always read the book and I always forget forgetting okay. the name. <laughs> <laughs> but I, love, I like short, short stories. Mm. So the recent one I read was Marie. Mm. And it's from the Esterian Carey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she she wrote that book about love story, the war. Mm -hmm. It's about the Second World War. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it was a love story about. Uh, um, I, I, it was a very sad, and and yeah, just beautiful. It's actually an uh, autobiography oh. of somebody. Yeah, of her aunt. Yeah. I'll definitely check it out. Marie. Surely. Marie. Your dream holiday destination. Mm, I I usually don't take holidays. I mean, dream. Don't you, you don't take breaks. You're always working. I'm working, but I mean, I'm good with people that I love mm. and I'm comfortable with. Mm. So that would be my dream. I mean, I would any day like choose to be with my friends mm. or my circle. So, yeah. and we're fancy. Oh, lovely! To click nice pictures. <laughs> How about, okay, I was about, about to ask you the name of your pet because I keep seeing your cat on yeah. the screen. You know it's Auntie Lucy. Yeah, Auntie Lucy, yes, correct. Any message that you'd like to give to your family and friends? Well, uh, thank you for always supporting me. I'm not the perfect person and I, I cannot say that I'm the perfect, but I try to be the best every day. And um, thank you for the endless support because um, I know that um, I don't keep in touch with mm. my close ones, but in my heart, we always mm. stay connected. We pray for each other. So um, I'm super thankful for their, you know, enduring my, <laughs> sometimes uh, my outburst, <laughs> but <laughs> I love them so much. Lovely, lovely. Define yourself in three words. Kind, caring, and um, very sometimes <laughs> I would say um, occupied. Occupied. Yeah, okay. what would be the other word for that? <laughs> occupied I, with my mind. <laughs> I think I somehow get you. Know? Yes. <laughs> what is your happiest childhood memory? See, I, um, 
I think I w it would be my dad, mm. my late dad. Uh, he will always sing uh, when giving a piggy bag on oh. it on his um, back. He will sing looking at the moon, and that was the best uh, night. And also listening to old uh, music. I mean, it's not all for them, but it's all for me. So the cassettes. He would play the tape recorder, put on the cassette, his favorite, and uh, PGs were his favorite. So, wow. like, I would listen to him, to the music, with his humming, he would listen, sing with, along with the band. So, it is too beautiful. I think that would be the best childhood because my childhood, I would say, it was very um, different than the rest of the children because I was bullied a lot for not having a dad. Oh really? Oh my goodness, seriously? Yes, I lost my dad by cancer in 1996. I was in class 8. Mm. So, yeah. I childhood was not that great for me because I was sent to hospital. Mm. There I received a lot of um, trashing from my seniors. Uh, even at the point of where I didn't feel like talking about it with my parents but harassing physically as well and uh, experienced that as a kid I, and my seniors were I mean <laughs> way senior than us age with age so um, like ho hostel life is not that, not that great for me and I don't want parents to send their children to hostel because this is the right time, like, you know, um, the point where you will build the trust, the love, the support with your kids. So don't send away your children to hostel. And um, my nanny, I mean, the people who are looking after us, the ayahs, they were not even educated as well. So they don't understand the psychological, the kind of pressure that we as the children goes through and um, it was very terrible I don't want to sh I mean if I start now I don't get over so I'll just say that my childhood was not that great because bullying then talking about my uh, you know in our we say Amitzer right widow mm -hmm. so you're an Amitzer son you know I, I, and that was that was um, the worst to feel so yeah. I, I find it so bizarre. <laughs> I mean, I wonder what went into their minds those bullies to bully someone for not having a parent. I, know. I mean, it's so bizarre. I can't even, the, even the even the even um, the section of people who were taking care of us, yeah. they see our faces, our parents' status, if they are from STO or. Uh, doctor or engineer, daughter, sons, they will not even talk, uh, you know, they will not even punish them. But for us, it was a different story. So, yeah, life you, goes on. You have come such a long way now, actually, I'm thinking about it. Right? Absolutely, I think it's almost 20, almost a 20 year after I, after um, I got off from that hostel for three particular years. I suffered a lot and um, it was terrible and when I say terrible it's very terrible it's a nightmare even if I say it right now it gets chills <laughs> I think to be able to uh, admit to I mean reveal something so close to you right and it's not so close to you I guess it I not I guess I am sure that it takes a lot of bravery and courage so I just want to thank you so much for sharing that with us, to be willing to share that with us. Because your step, I believe, will encourage many others who are being bullied as children right now. Right, right. And there are lots of Opang Jamir out there, like fatherless or motherless. Just be kind. There's nothing wrong to be kind in this world. Amen. So true, so true. If there is a message that you would like to give to um, children who are being bullied right now, is there any message that you want to give to them? Um, I know that 
it will take a lot of courage even sometimes uh, at the point where you're being bullied but even if you say that you're being bullied your guardians will mis mistakenly say that oh you just want to escape from that particular space so just be aware of don't take characteristic actions within yourself at that moment hit that moment uh, just calm down because I also wanted to suicide myself because of the terrible bullying uh, at the hostel and uh, I didn't because thinking of my sister and my younger brother and my mom I did not took the step so just be just have come uh, very uh, you know coming from a very deeper uh, heart I would want to say that you have a loving siblings out there who are waiting for you to return so just don't take terrific steps and uh, I know that one day you will be able to talk like today uh, fearlessly um, you know just saying that I'm being bullied uh, physically as well kicking and every night getting the punishments for not just um, you know doing a major major mistake but just for walking stumbling on the wooden blankets of our hostel like we've been compulsorily like you know punished so I think um, for all those young ones like Opong who is similar to my story there are so many Opong Jamir out there having who have lost their parents I just want them to say that God is there for you and God is your father your mother so just believe in him and you will rose up Amen. I'm just speechless and just taken aback right now <laughs> <laughs> I think we have all amazing stories to share right so this is the community that you have built and thank you for you know making me a part of it, you know this striving force the catalyst for change today I think it is our pleasure to have you here with us not just I initially thought oh we're just going to talk about fashion and we're so exciting and you know the story that you have shared it's giving courage and inspiration to so many people out there and um, children who are being bullied right? do you feel that sometimes guardians or people who are taking care of them they tend to turn a blind eye absolutely absolutely like I tried running away from the hostel twice the second time i was caught and uh, can you see my ear i mean the listeners yes. can't see it but i have a long ear right so oh this my. is actually the um punishment the pulling of my ear from our uh wardens our headmaster our ayas our seniors like you know and also um i have a very a quick uh back pain mm -hmm. sometimes it's all because I, we have been punished so much so physically I think we have been punished as a kid uh, to the lim limits of I, su I should say torture mm. so yeah but sometimes the the authorities are quite blinded even the mm. food that it served us was totally horrible mm. so being here today in this position, right. is there any message that you'd like to give out to all the bullies? Well, um, there will be a time where you, your um, actions will no longer be valid. And right now, with this um, coming of the, the social media, the technology, the Me Too movement or anything, I mean, there will be a time for you to just handcuffed by the authorities mm -hmm. so I think it's better to stop your action mm -hmm. that would be my message to the police true true you never know where we'll end up in the future right? absolutely so better not make mistakes when you're young absolutely absolutely yeah I've been saying thank you so much but seriously thank you so much for sharing this story with us I think that's such a big step in encouraging listeners to come out of your fear absolutely and I mean, if you, somebody who is in a position of 
uh, influence like you. If you guys don't talk about it, who will, hey? So thank you so much. I think it's time. And mm. as I've mentioned, modeling was my rebirth mm. of my life, where I've gained all my confidence. Mm. So I've been modeling for the past many, many years now. Mm. So I wanted to share about my story, how it shaped me. Mm. But that was not the thing that a child should go through. True, true. Being bullied. So that is what I wanted to speak about, you know, courageously, even in the future, in more detail. <laughs> <laughs> Your life is a life of courage. It's as simple as that. And you have Thank taken you. such a bold step in sharing this story. You took a bold step when you were 16 years old, choosing a career which was not that known. Right? So your life is an entire story of courage and we really wish that you'll continue on this trick Thank and you. continue influencing young people even more. Thank you so much, Atu. So, um, you're always busy, right? You are modeling and then I'm sure you are doing a lot of other businesses yeah. as well because you're always occupied as far as I know. So when you aren't working, mm -hmm. right, the little free time that you have, mm -hmm. what do you like to do? 